Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey Hudson, um, and I am a MySoNet educator. Um, so come on in, have a, have a seat, get comfortable, and we are going to talk about digitizing. So uh, once again, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and remind everyone um, that if you see uh, any kind of uh, links or they want you to click on and they're asking for any kind of personal information, please do not click on that. That is not from us. This is a free event to you. So please, if you see anything like that, just go ahead and report it or just pass it on by. Um, my behind the scenes, scenes crew, uh, Meredith, Thomas, and Ryan, they work very hard to keep it out of there. Um, but once in a great while, one will slip through. So just don't click on anything that is not from us. Um, once again, my name is Mickey Hudson, and today we are going to be talking about digitizing with the MySoNet embroidery. So I'm looking very forward to this because um, it, it, it is one of those things that's really fun, but it's a little daunting if you take a first look at it. Um, it can be a little scary. So uh, we're going to try and de-scarify it for you a little bit uh, and get you ready to play. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my view and let you see my computer. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put myself up in the corner. So we're going to be talking about digitizing. Um, and I am on a Mac, but I'm also running Windows. So every once in a while, you will see my screen change like that. And this is my Windows side. But every once in a while, I may show my Mac uh, users uh, something that is in a different spot, for instance. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open the MySoNet embroidery, and I'm just going to go ahead and double click, and I'm going to double click, and it takes a second. There's a lot of information that's being loaded, so it takes a second to make sure that you don't just double click, double click, double click, um, that will just give you a whole bunch of windows open. So you saw it took a minute for it to come up. But we're going to start with the very basic of digitizing, which is express design. Now, the express design is in the gold and in the platinum level. Um, but we're going to go ahead and click on it. As you can see here, with the new MySoNet embroidery software, as soon as you open it, the welcome screen has all these quick references right from the get-go. So you can tell it what you want right from the get right from the start. So Express Design, it creates an embroidery automatically from an image. So if I go ahead and click on that, it comes up with this window. I have made this window gigantic for you to see, but unfortunately it just kept this really small. But what you can, if you're having trouble seeing, the first one says create an express embroidery. And it gives you a little image here of what it's going to do. It's going to actually make the fills and fill everything in. The next one is a create express trace. And this will just create an outline. If you watched uh, Karen Charles, uh, my sonet with the quilting designs, she talked quite a bit about that. Um, and then the express border will just make like a satin borderline. But I'm going to go ahead with the, the embroidery, the create express embroidery. And I'm going to make my window a little smaller because it's just not being happy for me. Why did you go so big? Hopefully I can make it smaller. There we go. All right, come back up here. So the reason I needed to make it a little smaller was all my next commands were down here below. So once I've selected what I want to do, I'm going to come on down and choose next. It's going to ask me a few questions here. So just kind of think of these next few pages as it's just asking you what you want. It's not trying to be confusing and it's not trying to make your life hard. It's just say, this first question is, how do you want to load the picture? I can either load a picture 
from my, my computer. I can paste a picture if I had copied it first and I can pull it from my, my camera or anything else that I may have plugged in. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and load a picture. And one of the things that's gonna open up is it's gonna open up my files. Now I'm gonna come on over. You will find your uh, my Sonet in your documents folder. So I'm gonna come down to my Sonet. And when I open up my Sonet, there's all of these samples in here for all of these different um, programs. So there's, there's digitizing, there's regular embroidery, uh, picture stitch, sketch, et cetera. But I'm gonna go ahead and open embroidery and I'm going to select I do apologize for that. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'm gonna come down to my picks and it'll give me quite a, a, a few different clip arts to, to choose from. All right, I thought I'd fix that. Give me one second. It is my parallels. It is trying to match the um, the display ratio on the two. And as soon as I keep opening stuff, it's changing. So please bear with me. But I can come down here and as you can see, there's quite a few of these to select from. There's some different ones in digitizing, um, et cetera. So just take a look, they're really fun. And if you watched Karen's, uh, Karen Charles's broadcast, she was playing with the draw and paint, which we're going to do a little bit, but there's a whole bunch of designs in there as well that can be used uh, as well. So draw and paint is only in the platinum level, just a FYI, but is a lot of fun things. And I'm just going to look for a star. So I'm going to just keep this really simple. I'm going to come and take this little star and I'm going to tell it OK. So once I'm happy with this, then I can go ahead and go to next and it's gonna ask me some more questions. So do I wanna zoom? Do I wanna crop it? Do I want to, you know, change the, the, the size of it? Do I wanna save the picture? It's just asking me questions. I'm pretty happy. This is a pretty simple guy. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue next. Now here is again, Next page, more questions. Do I want to fit the design to the hoop or do I want to enter a, a specific size? I'm going to go ahead and enter a specific size. I'm going to change my hoop and I'm going to just make it a little larger. So I'm going to tell it OK. And I'm going to change my size here to, uh, let's just do 90. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So here it's giving me a view of what it's going to look like. And as you can see, I have what, six colors, five little points and one in the center, um, but I have 10 colors over there. Why do I have so many? One of the things that I'm gonna switch to my full view again, one of the things when it comes to bringing in a design, if you're gonna use a picture, um, to think about is the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. So when you're bringing in a design, the cleaner the design, the easier time you're going to have. And pictures and images come in all kinds of formats. There's JPEGs, there's PNGs, um, et cetera. There are also vectors. Vectors are going to be cleaner than your picture for formats. And vectors can come from those um, drawing programs like Adobe and stuff like that. Um, and then there are also the SVG files. So the cutting files you can use as an image as well. And they make very clean uh, designs. But one of the things I'm going to switch back here for a moment. One of the things that is happening here is because this is a, a, a more of a picture format, 
it's there's a little pixelation going on so it's picking up a little bit of the pixelation which is causing some shading which is why we see so many colors so if you have a simple design like this and you want to fix it right now we can go ahead and do that so what i'm going to do first of all is i'm going to just get rid of some of these shadings i'm going to select one and i can delete it and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to reset it. All right. This was not a good image for deleting. So that one didn't do anything. And I've got this light. I'm going to delete him. But I'm not panicked because I'm going to clean things up a bit. So I can kind of clean, if I see an obvious color that is not one that I'm gonna be using, I can just kind of clean it up and delete it right there. But again, I have these two that are still very close in color here, but I'm not going to worry about it because I can fix that next. So here it's going to generate the, oops, I missed something. Uh, it's going to generate the design. Now, one of the things that you may be noticing right now is that center spot is missing. So it literally saw that spot as part of the background. So I'm going to back up and we're going to talk about the background. So right now it's seeing all of this area as background. So that is why it ended up deleting this. But I don't want it to delete this. So if it misses a color, a really easy fix is to come down to, I'm going to pick a color. So I'm just going to pick that color and I'm going to select that color right there. And you can see it added a color right here and it added it over here. So it changed the color here. So it's no longer seeing that as part of the background. So now when I continue, you will see now I've got it filled. Now over here, again, there's more questions. I can change the fabric that I am going planning to stitch this on in the program. So it will make compensations for, for the fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and see if you can see that. Right now it's on a woven. I'm going to change it to a fleece. I'm going to come down here and refresh preview and you may or may not be able to see any changes on this particular one. I'm going to go back to woven. Okay. So I'm actually going to go back, back, back. I'm going to say I want a different picture. So I'm going to go back again to I apologize, I really don't know why that's happening. My Sonet, I'm gonna go into digitizing and I'm gonna grab this little duck. So I'm gonna continue. Again, he's gonna ask me questions. I'm good, I'm good. We're just gonna leave him alone. And again, so now you can see that I have, there's one color, two color, three color, four color, five color. I have 10, I don't need all 10. So I'm just gonna again, start to delete some of these. And I don't need any of those grays, those are just pixels. So as you can see now, I have the two, the two guys here, four colors, but again, this wing is missing. So I'm just going to tell it I'm gonna pick. If I select the pick, which is right down here and touch, he brings it back. So it adds a new color and it picks that little spot that I missed. Isn't that cool? I think that's so cool. So we're going to come over and click next. And I'm going to go ahead. Oh, here, I want you to take a look at his eyeball. So when I change to fleece and refresh my preview, you're going to see his eyeball change because you can actually see the compensation being changed. So that's why I went back and grabbed the duck because you can actually see the change. Okay. 
So now I can go ahead and click finish. <laughs> All right. So now with the Premiere Plus 2 software, these would be stitches. And if I wanted to make changes to them, I would have to go into the modify module and make changes. However, with the MySonet, I can just come up here and say I want to edit the design. And this is going to open up digitizing. So if you have the platinum, you can have you have digitizing. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit. And you're going to see it's opening and digitizing. And this again is going to take a second to come up. So there it is. And what happens is I get this little film strip over here. So it takes each component and lists it in the film strip. So for instance, you can see this first one is the white of my duck's eye. So it's just this, this pot spot with the space in the center. And the space in the center is down here in the black. This is going to be the little dot. But I'm going to go ahead and take the body here so you can really see what's going on. But as soon as I select him, you see all these little nodes that go all the way around? These are editing nodes. So if I were to grab something and pull him, I really don't know what's going on, um, and pull him, I can change the shape of my my design right i'm going to go ahead and click undo put him back where he was um i can also change the fill pattern that's going on i'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger Let's see so it'll probably go black every time i seem to touch the screen it goes black so but it's just for a second so all right Ooh. so can we, can we see this better all right, because what's going on here is it's got this fill going on. So the first thing that I can edit is I can edit the, sh the shape. I can also edit, let me right click to release. We're gonna, whoops, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But right here, you see this guy right here? This is, I call it the origin or the, the origin, you know, where the stitch originates from. But here, there's a little tab here and with that, I can move the fill and change the fill direction if I wish to. So let's change it to a fill that you can really see that on. So as you saw by accident, when I right clicked, um, it came up with options. I can either come over to my film strip and right click to get to my properties, or I can just right click on the design itself and it'll bring up my properties. So over here, I could come and change my pattern fill to any of these options. Let's just do a stippling stitch and it will change the fill. I can then go and change even more if I wanted to bring my stipples, I'll just go ahead and show you. If I wanted to change the gap and do like micro stippling, him down. Whoops, not that. Let's go to two. So if I wanted to go to micro stippling, or I could even change it to a straight or triple stitch it, this is where I can make the changes here. So can you see that okay? I'm going to change this color real quick. And I'm going to make him a hot purple. So there you can see. So there's just all this fun stuff that I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and change him back to a fill pattern because the other options that we have is we have a whole bunch of different fill patterns to choose from. So if I come down here, you can see, sorry about that. So if I come down here, you can see there are just quite a few different fill patterns that you can choose from. So we can come and let's put some bubbles on him. 
So now I want to change the color to something else because now you can't see the detail. There we go. So now you can see there's texture. I can still come and change, but you can really see how you can rotate the pattern and the design. So I think I need to have a seizure warning <laughs> because it's flipping so much. Um, don't you just love technology? So are there any questions about anything that I've gone over so far? I know for some of you, uh, this is a lot of review. And then there are some of you that this is brand new information. Okay. But this is something that is new, that we are able to go to Express Design and make changes right away. So it really is kind of cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm just going to go ahead and close it. But look what happened here. When I closed my digitizing, look, it's already right there in my embroidery. So now I can come over here and add letters if I wanted to. This is another thing that is super cool is it's just all kind of right. All inclusive now to right now. It's the MISONET is I've been working with software probably since 4D days. And this is by far the easiest software I've ever worked with with all the upgrades. It is so awesome. And now it is really more inclusive and it works more like um, as a sewer, as an embroiderer. It, it's more intuitive to the way I think rather than being so computer oriented and program oriented before. It's just really amazing how much easier it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just delete all this. I'm just going to select all and delete. So let me back up because I did that kind of quick. I can come here and I can come over to my home and I can select all. And it will select all of the designs. I can come over here and click and hold the shift key and click on the second one to select the all both. And or I could come and do a box select and select all. So whatever your preference is, I happen to be I touch my keyboard a lot. So I will try and catch myself and let you know what I'm having, what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So does it have limited fonts or you can you use fonts you have? So let me come over to the letter tab. So it does have, now I have platinum, so all of my fonts are turned on. Um, gold will have a few fewer and silver will have a few fewer than that. Um, but these are the built-in fonts. So these are the ones that come with the software. However, we have font manager over here. So if I come to font manager, I can import a font. Sorry, give it a second. I can import a font from embroidery. So what that means is if you've purchased or gotten a, a, a font collection, if you just load it to your uh, computer and then try and bring it in, you know if you want to put dog, you have to bring in D and bring in O and bring in G and line it all up. However, in Font Manager, you can now bring all those into your fonts and program them in so that now I can just type DOG and get the same thing. So I'm, I hadn't planned on talking about that, but I will uh, show you real quickly. So over here, so I'm going to close this so I can walk you through where to get there. So I'm in the Letters tab, and if I go to Font Manager, down here in the font tools, I can import from a selected import fonts. So I would come, I need to come down to my fonts. 
because that is a built in. So I don't want to, there we go. So I'm, what happened? It's not gonna let me move my window over for some reason. So what happened here was I told it I wanted to edit my imported fonts and this is a built-in so it wouldn't let me do it. I had to click here and over here I can just say, um, sorry, I'm gonna have to, so I'm in Windows right now. I only have Windows set up for classes. Um, I'm going to switch over to my Mac. So um, for my Mac users who are now cheering, um, let's come over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my letters. I'm going to go to my, my quick fonts and I can import from here. So I can say I want to call this uh, Facebook Live. And I do this only so I can delete it later. And then what it's going to do is I can come over here. And I'm going to come to my embroidery. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Oish. So, all right, let me see what I can do here. But, all right. So basically what we're going to do is going to start over and let me start rather than trying to get y'all confused. So we go to font manager, we're going to import fonts. This little window comes up. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it Facebook and I'll tell it okay. And then I can come to my, my folder where I have my embroidery collection of different letters and I'm going to click on the A. So if it's a capital A, I'm going to go ahead and click on the capital A. I'm going to close this because I don't have any on here. I know. Oh. So what's, what's going to happen is once you have the name, the name is going to pop up here. And when I select, when I select the A, it's going to automatically default to A. So it'll put your A in your A. Then you, then you click on B and it will open up your folder again and you can select the B design and you can go to C, et cetera. Where you see down below, there's lowercase. If there's extended, you can add an extended. Um, but the nice thing too is that you can work at it at a little bit at a time. So you don't have to do the whole alphabet. You may go A, B, C, D. Okay, I've got things to do. Come back later and do add a few more. So I hope that makes sense. Um, maybe we'll have a Facebook Live just on that because it is a really cool feature. Um, but I wasn't prepared to show that um, today. But that is where you will find it in your font manager um, under import selected fonts, import fonts from embroidery, sorry. Okay. Did that answer your question, I hope? Or did it just confuse you more? All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and go back to file. Now, if I were to open up again, I would be able to get back to my welcome screen or I can come down here to file and that will bring me back to my uh, welcome screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come down to my digitizing and I'm going to, it automatically opens digitizing. And this is such a cool feature. So my embroidery is open and anything that I do here or in modify uh, or stitch edit or anything like that, it just automatically takes care of it behind the scenes. It's so cool. So in digitizing, I have a few more options to choose from. So I have a create express embroidery trace border like we did before, but I can load or create a background picture. I can load an existing design or I can start with no picture. I'm gonna go ahead and load a picture. Now, Karen really talked about um, the draw and paint portion 
Why are you being Omri? There we go. So Karen uh, Charles did talk about the draw and paint program quite a bit, and we'll probably have something on it in the future. Um, and that is where you could kind of really play with designing uh, stuff. But we're going to kind of just go with a pre-made picture. Now, this picture that I'm going to use, my um, good friend, Sue Mesa, if you're watching, uh, created this artwork for me for this class. And she gave me permission to share it with you guys. So I we will share it with you if you are interested in into um, I'm getting another question, which is why I'm hesitating. When mapping mapping purchase fonts with the font manager, do you have to map those letters like the lowercase a, lowercase b, one at a time? Yes, you do go one at a time. Um, so you've got to designate the like the a key button, the capital A button to a capital A in the fonts. And you have to go and the capital B to the capital B in the in the embroidery. So you, you are connecting them that way. And so, yes, it is a little bit tedious. But like I said, you don't have to do it all in one sitting is you can come and do a little bit at a, at a time, like when you're watching TV and or whatever, but you can do it kind of on your downtime. And before you know it, you'll have them all done. When and where was the Karen Charles class I am referring to? So on your Facebook page there, let me just um, switch to, uh, so let me go to my Sonet Facebook. So when you're on the Facebook page, all right, let me go to home. I think it's because I am, let me just go to Facebook. All right. Oh, crapies. Let me try it here. So let me come here. So I only use my window side for um, my software. So nothing is set up the way it is on my, my Mac side. So if I come over here, and in this window, so right now that's me. Hoo -hoo, hello, everybody. But if you come over here and you look at videos, there are all kinds of previous videos. This is the video that I am referring to. Um, that when I'm referring to the video of Karen Charles just did this, she did a quilt design video where she is in draw and paint quite a bit. So that is the one I'm referring to. Okay. All right. I'm going to close you. Okay. So the image of the snowman will be posted when the live event is over. Um, it will be in the comment section. And this is the snowman that I am referring to. So I'm going to bring, let me back up so I don't lose you. So I'm selecting a, I'm loading or creating a background picture. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to come up here and load a picture. This one is on my desktop. And this is the one that I am going to be sharing. So thank you, Sue, once again. Um, it was very thoughtful. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And do I want to crop him? Sure, he's kind of big there. So do you see how he's, he, this allows me to crop? Or if I only wanted his top half, but do you see how that crop, what that cropping is doing? I'm going to go ahead and click next. And I'm going to, 
I'm going to go ahead and enter the size because I'm going to change the size. I'm going to change my hoop to 150 by 150 and I'm going, whoops, okay. And I'm going to change the size to 120. It's pretty large, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now I just have the drawing. There are no stitches. If I come over to view, view is where I can control my background image. So here's my background image. I can, yep, I can make it all black. Woohoo, I'm so awesome. I'm going to slide this on over. But you see how I can make him come in? It's just, just um, a picture. So I'm going to come over here back to home. So what I want to do and kind of the whole point of this particular Facebook Live is for those of you that have digitizing or have been thinking about digitizing, I want you to get in there and start touching digitizing because I know it's one of those scary realms that a lot of us kind of shy away from. But once you kind of know the basics of it, it is really, really a lot of fun. So we have the different creates. There's a quick create, a freehand create, and a point create. Now, quick create is, is pretty much a point and shoot. I say I want to, I say I want to make a fill. I can click here and a fill is done. And right up here I have a fill and a satin. So it would put a fill and a satin. So it just kind of does everything for me. Freehand create is if you want to, if you're more artistic or you have one of those drawing tablets or you're just very adventurous, uh, freehand create is where you kind of freestyle it. And then point create kind of does the same thing, except I would do my lines point by point rather than freehand. So I'm going to show you the difference. I will let you know I live in, uh, in between quick create and point create. Freehand create, I can't draw a happy face. Uh, with, I, I, so I do not live in, in uh, freehand create at all. So, But I know how to use it, so I will definitely show you. So we have pattern fill um, and satin. They're both highlighted right now. So if I wanted to turn one off, all I have to do is touch and you can see how it's kind of grayed out. Or if I want to turn it back on, et cetera. Down below where you see there's a little, um, let me put this more in the center. You can see there's a little carrot. It's a little triangle there. If you click there, we have more options. So I can select the fill style that I want before um, I, I tap over here. All right. Now I'm going to put, a fill this guy here in, I'm going to start with, um, the body of the snowman, which kind of leads me a little bit. I'm going to backtrack just a bit, uh, because when it comes to digitizing, you, there is a little kind of thought beforehand, um, when you're looking at this is if you've never embroidered before, embroider something out. But if you've ever embroidered before and watched how a embroidery design stitches out, you will see that there's kind of a weird order to it. But there's a thought process behind it. They're trying to minimize jump stitches. They're trying to create a layering. What is the farthest back? What's coming forward, etc. So that is what I'm going to be trying to do when I'm doing this. I, the snowman is the farthest back and then all his clothes and stuff like that are kind of on top. So that's why I'm choosing to do the snowman first, if that makes sense. So if there's any questions, please let me know. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this, the snowman body and face. Right now, blue is selected. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change color. And I'm going to make him kind of a, a you know, a, a pale blue so that you can see it. I'm also going to turn off my grid because I think that might help a little bit too. So I'm going to turn off my grid. 
so that all you're seeing is my little critter here. Now I'm going to come back to make sure I'm in quick create because this is my point and shoot. I do not want the satin. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And I have quick stitch here. So I'm going to go ahead and select quick stitch. And I'm just going to touch into this lower portion of the snowman. And as you can see, when I do this, he is going to give me a color tolerance. And I can see whether or not he's seeing the shape that I'm looking for. And I can change the color tolerance if it's having trouble seeing it, but it can see this shape just fine. The number of points, this is kind of a personal preference as well. So um, the number of points, I'll, I'll let me just show you. I'm going to keep it at low and I'll show you what it's talking about. But you can do low, medium, or high points. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it low. And he fills right in. Now, there will be, cancel, there will be different, if you've ever done digitizing before, um, you know, if you've had a lot of experience digitizing or if you're, you know, been digitizing for a while, the thing about this stuff is there's, there's 10 different ways to do all of the same things. And it's all about just finding your way. So my way may be a little different than what you've been taught in the past, but it works for me. And I'm all about keeping things as simple as possible. And so a lot of these are kind of simple. And when it comes to these kind of designs, I tend to do all the fills, get everything filled up, and then I will kind of come back and edit. Um, I will talk a little bit more about test stitching because I will not usually do the whole design. I'll do kind of a cluster and just do a quick test stitch to make sure I'm on the right track. And then I can keep adding and editing. So what I'm going to do here is if you take a look here, do you see all these little points here? So those are when I it asks, do you want low, medium, or high points? This is low. I have more than enough points here to do anything that I need to. So do you guys get, get that a little bit there? Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and do his face. So I'm going to come up and do quick stitch again. Now, for those of you that are in the know are going, no, because I'm doing this on purpose. So if I come over here and fill his face here, and you can see my tolerances, I can see his face. But what happens is, oh, fills in the whole thing. We don't want that. We want his little, we want his eyes and nose to show. So if we come over here to quick stitch with auto hole, it's going to detect these spaces. And now if I click in here and move my tolerance screen, you can see that it's made a little line around my extra pieces as well. So I can go ahead and tell it, okay, cool, huh? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to freehand create and Freehand create, in this case, I'm going to say I want to do a line instead of a fill. Oh, no, I'm going to go ahead and do a fill. So I'm going to tell it here I want to create a line or area. So previously in the quick create, quick create is the line or area. So this is going to just do the same thing. But in this one, it's showing you the image of a pencil because you're going to come over here and you're going to draw a line. I told you I cannot draw a happy face. And it's going to create that little guy right there. So I personally don't go play in freehand create very often. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to come over here to point create. So point create is similar to freehand create, except it does give me a little bit more, um, it's, it's a little easier to use. So I went ahead and zoomed in and I still have the zoom button on my hand here, as you can see. All I have to do is right click and it'll let it go. 
All right, so I'm going to come over here and create a line. So again, we have the same commands, the, the fill, the hole, et cetera, the fill, the hole, the fill, the hole. So those are going to be all the same, except now I can just click on around and it, I just have a little more control doing the point create. And I can go ahead and right click. And see how I still have this icon in my hand? He's still trying to, to create the line or area. So anytime I'm done with something, I just want to get in the habit of right-clicking. And that will let go of whatever command you have told it. So I'm going to go ahead and here I can kind of change things and fix it if I want to. So the thing is, when you're creating, when you're creating, oh, you don't have to stress going, oh, it doesn't look exactly the way I want it to do. That's okay because we're in create. We are still, it's Play-Doh. We can make it do whatever we want it to do. So once I have this going on, then I can, I'm just going to come back to quick create. Were there any questions about the differences between quick create, freehand create, and point create? Um, because I'll go back. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, quick create pretty much the rest of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on down here. And I'm done with my snowman. And I'm going to start doing his attire. Well, no, let me do his arms first. But I'm going to do his arms first with our tree branches. So I don't want to keep going with the same color. So I'm going to come up here to color change. And I'm going to change color. And I'm going to go ahead and choose kind of a brown. And it adds that new color right into my film strip. And I'm going to go ahead and use quick stitch. And I'm just going to quick. And I'm going to quick. Now, once again, if it's not exactly the way you want, we are the, you know, we are the controller here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and show you some of this a little bit. I'm going to come in and zoom in. Well, actually, he came out pretty good. So I'm going to right click to let go of my zoom tool. Yeah, he looks pretty good too. Because I can come in, I can select them and move these little points and dots and, and put them exactly where I want them to be. I really, really, really apologize for that, folks. I really, really am sorry. I do not know what it's doing. All right. So what option did I get do to get the fill around the eyes and the nose? I'm just going to quickly delete him. And I'm going to come back here and make sure that I am in the color that I want to be here. So basically, I'm going to get rid of the little pom-pom as well. All right. So the what I did to create the holes because that's what those are considered. I want holes for more embroidery. So if I come to, they all have it, quick stitch, freehand, create, um, and point create have either the, the fill or line or the fill line and auto hole. So that's what this is gonna fill, do the whole fill. And the one with the auto hole is what allows me to get the auto hole. So can you see here where he's kind of, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm going to zoom in and see if you can get a better picture here. So I'm going to right click to let go. I'm going to auto hole and I'm going to slick, select there. But you see how it's giving me like this little pink and purple line around the outside and it's giving me like this yellow and blue on the inside that's seeing those little holes there. So it's going to leave those areas blank. And when I click on OK, that leaves the areas blank. So now I can add embroidery to these 
points later. Did that answer the question? All right. But what happens if I'm going to go ahead and undo, whoops, cancel. I'm going to go ahead and undo. But let's say I made a mistake and I'm down here and I decide to go do that here. And I go, whoops, I have the wrong color. I'm going to go ahead and, and release, right click to release. This is what's so awesome about the film strip. And digitizing has had this for a while. But I can come and just move that right up there. So all I did was just take it and I click, left clicked, held, and dragged it on up and put him back where he belongs. So very, very easy. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. So I am going to come down here too, is I'm going to come over here and I want to create the little outline here. Actually, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to come and create a new color and I'm going to do green. All right. So I'm going to just do quick stitch and I'm going to do, and again, this is one of those things I want to think about how it's going to stitch out. Because if I just come here and color it the way I would a coloring book, for instance, I may come and do this cuff and I may do this cuff. But remember, when you're stitching, that's going to do that, and then it's going to jump over here. So you're going to have thread behind you. So I'm going to kind of go in an order. So I'm going to tell it OK, and I'm going to tell it OK. So I'm kind of following a little cancel. That's letting me know right away that it got the wrong spot. Cancel. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So I could, I want to get that little guy right in there. There we go. And so now I'm going to come down. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to come down. And I'm going to come down. And now I'm working my way back up. So as you can see, it's going to stitch here and then it's going to jump, jump, but it's going in an order that is is minimizing the amount of jump stitches that I'm I'm actually going to have. So now I'm going to come up here. So you guys kind of does that kind of make sense so far? Because the next thing that I would do is I would come in somewhere I messed up. But that's okay. My There we go. So I want to put you here. There we go. All right. Because the next thing that I'm going to do, again, I've got this guy in my hand. I'm going to right click to release him. But what I'm going to kind of do here is just kind of take a look at where my start and stop are. So let me zoom in real quick so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and right click to release that. So you can see there's my start and there's my end. I can change where it's going to go. So I'm going to change my end here. He's going to come here next. And I can change my end here. And once again, what's happening here is it's going to stitch and it's going to stop. And then it's going to jump to come to the next bit. What happens is if I have my end here, it's going to have to jump farther here. So I'm trying to minimize how far. So like say if the end were here, it's going to have to jump all the way over to here if my start is over here. So I try to keep everything starting on one side, ending on the other. Starting, ending. The next spot is here. So I may move my start up in there and my end down here. But this does make this little guy does make things easier. OK, now I want one more thing before I'll show you um, a sample because. So I can go ahead and do my red. I can do all of that good stuff. But what I want to do is I want to do this little outline and the outline is what I want to do last. 
So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna change my color and I'm gonna go ahead and do that honking blue. Oops, let's do, I'm gonna move him down. So again, all I did was left click, hold and just dragged him on down. Okay, so over here in my color select, I can deselect the colors. All I want is this background here. And I have the blue selected, so I'm gonna be good there. And I'm gonna come and trace. And in this case, I'm gonna do a quadruple trace. And I'm going to, why are you being that way? Why are you being that way? Let me go to that. And... Come on, you do, you do me good all the time. Oh. No, cancel. I'm going to come to the outside here. All right. Now I want to talk about this a little bit too, because it doesn't look like he's picking up all of the lines here, but he really is. And I can increase my tolerance a bit if I wanted to, just to make sure. But when I tell it, okay, he's going to make the little lines. Oh, it looks like he missed a bit there. Why are you doing that? So what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my view. And I can turn my background off just so that you can see that he's doing the line. So I could have probably turned my tolerance up a bit more to so that it could see a little bit more of the lines. All right, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to come instead and come to home. I'm going to go ahead and draw everything up. So now he's all back in here. And now I want to come and kind of clean up some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to ungroup you, okay? Because what I want to do is I want to kind of clean up some of this. Now, one thing that is with digitizing is, again, I could have done a better job, um, but one of the things with digitizing is it is a little bit of this kind of back and forth. So you, once I get everything kind of where I want it to be, um, I'm going to do a test stitch. So this is what I was saying is I may not do the whole design before I do a test stitch. And I may actually come in and change. I'm going to just delete some of these. So what I did here is in the home screen, I'm over here in points and I can edit points. I can add points, I can delete points, I can convert points, but I'm just deleting some of these points because there is quite a few of them here. Um, so now I'm going to go into edit points and now I can come and I can drag these and get that to where it tucks under that little stitch line a little bit so that I'm not seeing the gaps. So once I do that, I may run a test stitch. Okay. But I can clean that up a bit. Now, one thing that I can tell you here is that I am not liking this. So I can come and I'm going to come all the way down. And I'm just going to select all these blue. Well, no, I can just do one. I'm going to go right click. Now there's properties and there's global properties. Global properties is going to change it all. So I've got a triple stitch. I'm going to just going to increase it to see what happens. But there is some playing that goes on with um, digitizing. So just keep that in mind. But as you can see, it can come together fairly quickly. Now, if I wanted to come and add the eyes, I'm going to do that real quick. And I'm just going to show you a test sample that I did. Oops. This is also right here. I'm doing the hard way. All of this right here is I can move all the way down to the bottom. I can move all the way down to the top. I can move all that kind of stuff. And I just keep always doing it the hard way. I'm going to come back to quick create. I'm going to change my color 
and I'm just going to make his little nose. So again, I'm in quick create. I do not want a double stitch. I want a fill pattern and I can just click in his nose and it will create the nose. I can create the eyes the same way. All right. But I hope that at least gets you into playing with the, the digitizing software because it really is fun. But I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the a project that I did with a test because I am out of time. So I mentioned earlier how cutting files um, can work really well in images and vectors. Um, one thing that you do want to be careful with is copyright issues or royalty issues um, because that can get you into trouble, especially if you're trying to do this for business. Um, so it, it's an enter at your own risk. Um, so copyright means that the, the, the image is owned whether it is on tissue paper or it's on the web or it's on a product, that image is owned. Um, royalty means that you can use the image, but the royalties of that need to go somewhere. Somebody's gonna get paid. And so um, you really kind of wanna be really careful when it comes to that. Um, I will often purchase like um, SVG files or uh, images for my own personal use. And that's what I've done here. So this is an SVG file. Let me see if I've got it here. This is an SVG file. And if you've ever seen an SVG file, um, it's pretty interesting. Let me go to Plague. Nope, you are not. So I don't have it, looks like I don't have it on this computer. And I don't. All right, but a, a SVG file will have the image. It will have different layers because it's often being cut in different layers. Um, and, you know, because of the, the current plague we're in, um, I chose a plague mask. And so here, this was the first one. I took him straight into the digitizing and I just did the, the quick create and then I test stitched him out. And he did pretty well, but as it was stitching, some of these, these lines were extremely heavy. And so I wasn't really happy with that. And I wanted to change the fill because it was on a mask and I just didn't want it to be so heavy. So I went back in and I made some quick editing to it and I changed my fill pattern from a fill to a spiral and then I just started poking around at the different densities until I was somewhat happy with that and I stitched it out but again everything was still kind of heavy so I came back and did it again I went back and edited it a bit more and in these, I actually kind of hand walked them and just turned them into more of a straight stitch. And so it came out really cute and I'm very, very happy with it. And some of you may have already seen me in it, but it is, it's just super fun. But anyway, I hope that answers some questions. Um, I will come back into the comment section and answer any questions that I might've missed. If you have future questions, um, Go ahead and type them in and we will uh, get back to you on that. And go check out um, Karen's uh, video now that you know where it is, because she does kind of go into the draw and paint portion, which I did not get the chance to do. Um, and it is really, really interesting stuff. So anyway, I will thank you all for coming. And I was so happy to be able to share a little bit of this with you. And I will see you next time. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.